Ladies and gentlemen, boys and girls, welcome back to the world of home tech with me, your host Paul Hibbert, and welcome to a dash button! This was sent to me about a year ago by a wonderful gentleman named Lee Hawk who said, I'd love to see what you could do with this. Um, then a week ago I received a flick, uh, which is a wireless button which can control pretty much anything, and I fell in love with it immediately. Uh, but a lot of the commenters, and I'm outraged by this, said, I thought you were a cheap channel! That's not cheap, that's 38 pounds! And you're right, that is not cheap. It's not cheap because it works really well, and I still fully recommend this product. But if you want cheap, I've got free. Uh, you can still get these for nothing if you do a little bit of fiddling. Uh, and this thing, its original intention is to order more bog roll when you run out of bog roll by putting it next to your bog roll and pressing it, and then bog roll is ordered via Amazon. That is an ingenious idea, Amazon. Well done. Uh, but us hackers, not really going to call myself a hacker, I'm not that cool. Uh, we like to hack things. This uh, is normally hacked using a Raspberry Pi as a go-between, uh, to go between this and whatever it is you want to control normally via if this then that. I don't own a Raspberry Pi, and so I wondered if Android could do it, and indeed it can. So, what I did was, I found an Android application that can control this and send the information to if this then that. It also found some other things that it could do. We'll touch on those on another video. Uh, the difference between this and the flick button is that the delay is probably unacceptable for a lot of people, but it's free. It's free. Get over it. So I'm going to show you the delay. If you press the button, you'll see that the little LED flashes white for a while until it times out. And it's the timeout that we need to happen. Once the timeout happens, you'll see it flash red. It then sends the request to if this then that, and the light comes on. So that actually isn't a terrible delay, and I personally can live with that. I'm perfectly happy with that, and you should be too. Uh, this is a tutorial that will involve uh, using this button via an Android device, so you'll have to install two pieces of software on either your mobile phone, uh, and I can confirm it doesn't use a great deal of battery, uh, or on any Android device. If you have an always-on tablet or an Android set-top box, you could use those instead. You'll need to install uh, JG Automate. I think I've got that right. If I haven't, you'll soon see it in the video. Uh, anyway, enjoy. So I'm in the UK where we get no sunshine whatsoever, and I've now had too much sun, um, quite easily, because it only takes about 10 minutes before us people in England burn and become completely insane with sunstroke. So if this video slowly ends up with me falling asleep as it sets in, I apologize. But I'm guessing, and I think this is right, that I have to like partially configure the dash button so notifications appear on the phone. So all I think I need to do is go to account in my amazon.co.uk app, and go to set up a new device, dash button, cool, yes, I will allow it. Allow. Okay, I agree, and I will get started. Press and hold your dash button for six seconds. One, two, three, four, oh, there's flashing blue. Connect. Cool, uh, I think I need to connect to my Wi-Fi so it knows how to get uh, the button on the network. Cool. Right, I think that is where I stop doing that. And now if I press the button... I get a notification, so that means the dash button is now communicating with my phone over the Wi-Fi. So this has taken a bit of bumbling, if I do say so. I've managed to figure it out. This is actually several days later. <laughs> I'm now going to open up the dash automation button and show you what you have to do. Uh, so first of all, skip all this garbage. Most of it doesn't work properly anyway, so definitely don't show help next time. Thank you very much. Uh, allow access to notifications you do need to do, so press OK to that, and then tick the button for dash automation, and then allow it because uh, it needs to be able to access your notifications in order to work. Uh, and then you can add your button. So the first thing I'll say is don't have your phone plugged in. I'm going to unplug mine. Uh, try and pick a quiet time where people aren't messaging you because all of these notifications are going to get in the way. Um, so I'm going to get rid of all of these things that I'm not using right now. Cool, that's fine. Uh, and now I can press the plus button and it's listening for notifications. So if anyone texts you now, it's going to screw it up. So this is why I'm saying pick a quiet time. Press the dash button now, so in real life I'm pressing my Olay button. And it's waiting for the notification. 
My overlay button has failed to connect, which is what we want it to do, and the notification has appeared. So it's saying Amazon shopping, your OLED dash button is almost ready for use. And that's the notification that will pop up every time. This app will cleverly dismiss that by default so it won't keep appearing in your notifications bar because that would be dead annoying. Uh, so I'm going to enter a description for it and I'm going to call it uh, what I'm going to do, which is toggle hue lights. I'm going to put it all in one word. It doesn't really matter, I don't think, for the name, but I'm going to keep everything consistent. So I'm going to say save. It's now asking me what I want to do. So I could have it send an SMS message to me. Uh, it'll, it'll ask for your phone number and you put your phone number in it, it'll send you a text message. It's asking me if I want to do if this then that, which I do, but that doesn't work, which I found out the hard way. Uh, automate is awesome, and I'm gonna show you that another day. Uh, but web action is what we wanna do. So I'm gonna tick the web action button and click the web action button there to take me to the web action section. So you see you've actually got your sections across the top. We were just in settings and all it's done is it's taken us to the web settings where I can either do a broadcast of a UDP or I can launch a URL. And what we want it to do is to send a, uh, a URL that if this then that will respond to. So if this then that will in turn switch on my Philips Hue lights. So what I now need to do is create a if this then that URL for me to put in here. So I'm gonna open if this then that. So in if we're gonna to go to this little icon at the bottom here, my applets, I'm gonna click the plus button because we want to add a new recipe. And the recipe is gonna say if this happens, and we're gonna go for webhooks. Webhooks is uh, if this then that's a service for receiving URLs. And we wanna send a URL to if this then that. So we're gonna say receive a web request and we need to connect the webhooks service to ift. And we're gonna call the event name toggle hue lights. Because that's what we've called it in the other app and I wanna keep everything consistent so everything works. I'm gonna click create trigger. So we now have something that says if this happens, webhooks receives a web request with toggle hue lights, then make that happen. And that is going to be my Philips Hue, so I need to search for the Philips Hue service and I want it to toggle my lights on and off. So the first thing I need to do is connect my Philips Hue account, otherwise it doesn't know whose lights to control. So I'm now gonna to pick toggle lights because I only have one button to control on and off. And it's now asking me what lights I want to control. So it can now see all of my lights because it's connected to my Philips Hue account. And I'm going to uh, use my right light for this example. Uh, so create action. So I now have a, an if this then that recipe that says if I receive a particular URL to if this then that, then switch my right light on or off finish. That is if this then that set up. All we need now is the URL to be able to trigger that event. Uh, so if I go to uh, my applets again and go to services, and this time go to webhooks, and go to documentation, it will tell me my own personalized URL. And this bit here where it says event, we're going to replace the word event with, you guessed it, toggle hue lights. If I now copy all of that to my clipboard and go back to our dash automation and back into the web section where we were putting our URL in, I can just paste that URL in there. One thing I've noticed with this app is it's it just loves to mess you around. So I'm going to just click one of these other boxes outside of that one uh, and then press my back key and then I'm going to scroll all the way over here. Uh, I'm going to check that listening it now has the correct code in, which it doesn't. You can see it's now got cable charging. So I'm going to press my button again on my physical Olay uh, dash button. I'm going to wait for the notification to come through. And I'm going to press save. You can see it's just taking me back to the settings button, so I'm going to come back here, I'm going to press this little button up here. And you can see it's now created two things, because this app is mental! So I'm going to check which one is the actual thing that I've just set up. That's got the wrong notification in it, uh, but the right URL in it. So let's just check the top one. It's got the right notification in it, and the right URL in it, so I'm going to delete the bottom one. Okay. That is it. If I press my Olay button now in real life, my Philips Hue lights toggle on and off. 
after a short period of uh, latency, which we've already discussed. Perfect, it worked. That is it, job done. I hope you can now control if this then that. Please subscribe to me and you might get to see more videos like this one in which I will be showing you how you could use exactly the same button to control things like your Broadlink RM Pro and there'll be a lot less of a delay because it won't actually need to go to if this then that. So stay tuned for that one. Uh, if you have enjoyed this video, please give it a thumbs up. If you do want to see some more of this guy, hit that subscribe button. And if you want to help support my channel, there are links in the description to both my PayPal and my Patreon, and in fact some products if you want to buy through me and give me some money that way. Uh, I'll see you next time. So what I did was it, was it, was it, was it, was it. <laughs> so I released a video, no, start again. So what I did with it, with it, with it. I'm going to keep doing that, aren't I? Ugh. Those sorts of things are in the description. I'm talking rubbish. <laughs>